Greetings and welcome to Midday Meditation here at the Cathedral of St. Philip on Wednesday, November 4th in the city and diocese, Episcopal Diocese of Atlanta. I'm Thee Smith and I'm pleased to share this Midday Meditation with you following the intensity of our election day yesterday on November 3rd. And uh, though it's November 4th, I'm still in awe of the convergence yesterday between the commemoration of Richard Hooker, a theologian and priest of the church who died in the year 1600, on yesterday, 1600, the convergence between that commemoration and uh, and today's and yesterday's election, and indeed this entire week of uh, of, of presidential election and politics. So um, let's notice those convergences after a moment of prayer as we pray for, as we say the prayer for a theologian and teacher of the church. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, by your Holy Spirit you give to some the word of wisdom, to others the word of knowledge, and to others the word of faith. We praise your name for the gifts of grace manifested in your servant, Richard Hooker, and we pray that your church may never be destitute of such gifts. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Well, I knew I had crossed a line yesterday when I could get excited by the convergence between our election day in 2020 and uh, an ancient uh, uh, Anglican theologian uh, who taught us the middle way, who taught us the middle way uh, between Reformed and Catholic uh, parts of our church. Um, in the 1500s, uh, which was most of his lifespan, as he deceased on in the year 1600, there was bitter controversy, as the collect appointed for his day says, and a day of bitter controversy between these two parts of our church, the Catholics and the Protestants, the Catholics and the Puritans, or the Reformers. And uh, Richard Hooker found what has been his legacy, a middle way between the two, and articulated that uh, as a theologian and teacher in the church. And uh, many of us, uh, I'm not the only one who uh, celebrates that legacy, uh, and, uh, and both conservatives and progressives in our own time. One writer uh, says that she knew that she needed more of Richard Hooker's perspective when she uh, had the kind of attitude found in this Dilbert cartoon, uh, quoting, she's quoting Dogbert, Dogbert in that cartoon as having said, um, uh, I'm going to be, uh, as having said, there's really no point in listening to other people. They're either going to be agreeing with you or saying stupid stuff. Well, lots of us have uh, found ourselves in that position, having that attitude, haven't we, in our recent uh, conflict and controversies, and uh, both in the nation, throughout the nation, and in our own churches, yes. And... Uh, Richard Hooker's genius, his gift of the Spirit, was to exhort us to carry peaceable minds in order to have comfort by this variety in our church. Carry peaceable minds so that we may be comforted by the variety in the church. Now, that exhortation to find comfort uh, reminds me of our upcoming Advent season when we sing a hymn invoking that Isaiah uh, verse, Comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. How can we have find comfort in our diversity as opposed to stress, tension, antagonism, and animosity, and bitterness, bitter controversy? This is the collect appointed for his feast day. Uh, o God, of truth and peace. You raised up your servant Richard Hooker in a day of bitter controversy to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and Reformed religion. Grant that we may find a middle way, not compromising for the sake of peace, but comprehending for the sake of truth. What is that path to peaceable minds? 
given the divisions that pit us against one another today? Well, I have found another way in which uh, Richard Hooker talks about this in a sermon, a celebrated sermon, in which he was expounding the doctrine of justification by faith, the Reformation doctrine, with, uh, and saying that uh, he still hopes, despite the fact that the Catholic Church didn't share that doctrine from its Protestant perspective, the truth of Reformed theology, nonetheless he hoped to see Roman Catholics in heaven with him uh, in the, in, 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 as, he, as he transitioned from this life. And he was challenged by a Puritan who said, uh, how can they be saved? How can they show up in heaven since they do not believe the doctrine of justification by faith? Therefore, they can't be justified. Hooker says, on the contrary, God is not a sophist who's eager to trip us up whenever we say something that's not correct. But rather, God is a courteous tutor, ready to amend whatever we say in our weakness or our ignorance is not correct, and to make the most of what we say that is right. Well, that pathway, finding a way where our opponents are saying something right, finding out what that is, and, and affirming that with them, however much we also try to persuade them of the truth of our alternative perspective, that's the pathway that Richard Hooker charted and, uh, and that we're invited to embrace for our time. It is a challenge, isn't it? To go to our opponents and find places where they are affirming things that we can also affirm uh, and celebrating that with them advocating that with them at the same time as challenging them to do something similar with toward us from the perspective of the truth that we hold. Finding comfort in, through peaceable minds. Well, I have uh, recently come across a, a, uh, a slogan by a group called Jesus 2020 in which they try to affirm this perspective from our Lord, uh, invoking the th four candidates of our presidential election season here, um, President Donald Trump and his Vice President Mike Pence, and then our former President, Vice President, former Vice President Joe Biden and his running mate, Kamala Harris, and saying about them, Kamala, is beloved, David is fearfully and wonderfully made, Don Donald is fearfully and wonderfully made, Mike is cherished, and Joe is important enough that I died for him, signed Christ Jesus. How can we despite our many divisions and bitter controversies and polarizations, also hold on to the faith once deposited to us, the faith perspective of unconditional love, of the Sermon on the Mount, and of this gospel text appointed for the feast of Richard Hooker. It's from the Gospel of John, chapter 17, beginning at verse 20 where Jesus prays to God the Father, I ask not only on behalf of these, but also on behalf of those who will believe in me through their word, that they may all be one. I in them and you in me, that they may become completely one, so that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. I repeat, Kamala is beloved. Donald is fearfully and wonderfully made. Mike is cherished. Joe is important enough that I died for him. Signed, Christ Jesus. The hashtag is Jesus2020. Let us conclude with the colic appointed for the feast of Richard Hooker.
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of truth and peace, you raised up your servant Richard Hooker in a day of bitter controversy to defend with sound reasoning and great charity the Catholic and Reformed religion. Grant that we may maintain that middle way, not as a compromise for the sake of peace, but as a comprehension for the sake of truth. Through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Certainly we have other prayers in this season of our life, uh, and I invite your intercessions as we pray together uh, for Christ's church and the whole world. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. Remembering especially Justin, our Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Rob, our bishop, and the Holy Father in Rome. And we pray for all who govern